Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to A Deeper Dive into African American Literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison. But these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of Black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 9, George S. Schuyler. There's perhaps no better summary of the life of George S. Schuyler than that offered by historian John Henrik Clark in Schuyler's New York Times obituary. I used to tell people that George got up in the morning, waited to see which way the world was turning, then struck out in the opposite direction. He was a rebel who enjoyed playing that role. While most of the prominent figures of the Harlem Renaissance advocated for producing art that demonstrated black creativity and excellence, Schuyler consistently wrote work that questioned the underlying reality of race as a concept. Importantly, he did so without ever denying the harm that racial discrimination caused to those individuals deemed inferior because of their skin color. Although his political orientation shifted over the course of his life from socialism to fairly extreme conservatism, Schuyler remained a vocal and opinionated commentator on the nation's racial politics throughout. He wrote most of his fiction during a 10-year stretch from the late 20s to the late 30s, and his opposition to the mainstream civil rights movement made him something of an outcast within the black literary community at the time of his death. But his complicated reputation has been slowly rehabilitated in the four-plus decades since. From this brief excerpt from the opening pages of Schuyler's best-known work, Black No More, you can see both his trademark biting humor and his contrarian streak on full display. The night after having his advances to a white woman forcefully rejected with a racial slur, the novel's protagonist, Max Disher, has an extravagant and vaguely erotic dream about sitting beside the woman, quote, on a golden throne while millions of manacled white slaves prostrated themselves before him, unquote. So here's an excerpt from the book. He awoke covered with perspiration. His telephone was ringing and the late morning sunshine was streaming into his room. He leaped from the bed and lifted the receiver. Say, shouted Bunny, did you see this morning's times? Hell no, growled Max, I just woke up. Why, what's in it? Well, do you remember Dr. Junius Crookman, that colored fellow that went to Germany to study about three years ago? He's just come back and the Times claims he's announced a sure way to turn darkies white. Thought you might be interested after the way you fell for that Ofe broad last night. They say Crookman's going to open a sanitarium in Harlem right away. There's your chance, big boy, and it's your only chance, Bunny chuckled. Oh, ring off, growled Max. That's a lot of hooey. Max went into Jimmy Johnson's restaurant and greedily read the account while awaiting his breakfast. He looked at his hands and felt the back of his head, where the straightening lotion had failed to conquer some of the knots. He toyed with his ham and eggs as he envisioned the possibilities of the discovery. Then a sudden resolution seized him. Crookman was staying at the Phyllis Wheatley Hotel. Why not go and see what there was to this? Why not be the first Negro to try it out? Sure, it was taking a chance, but think of getting white in three days. No more Jim Crow, no more insults. As a white man, he could go anywhere, be anything he wanted to be, do most anything he wanted to do, be a free man at last. Oh, and probably be able to meet the girl from Atlanta. What a vision! Follow the link at the top of this page to a website at the George Mason University that contains the full text of Schuyler's controversial 1926 article, The Negro Art Hokum, as well as some brief additional details about his life. Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of A Deeper Dive into African American Literature. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, as well as to David Summerstein and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio.